The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 23rd, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. And more important than that, during this next 53 minutes or so, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, We've got you covered there, too. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. we got a mixed bag out here. you got the uh, NASDAQ 100, NASDAQ Composite up 28 and 30 points respectively. Dow's off 117, S&P's down 6, Russell's off about 6, Semis are off 45, Tranny's down 47, Gold's off 9 bucks, Silver's down 35 cents, Lights with Crude's off 2 bucks and change, Natural Gas off 59 cents, and the 30 Treasury's up 1 point and 16 30 seconds. She's trading at 137.15. So let's first start out by reminding our Ourselves, where are we at? Where we're at is if we take a look at the U.S. cash indices out there, what well, we have are bottom patterns for each. We've got buy the D point patterns. Those remain in effect. So we've got the bullish signal out here for the indices that will remain until those levels fail. Will those levels fail? Well, if we take a look at the daily equity futures, that uh, this chart here is really what I was kind of looking for yesterday. What well, we have here are bottom patterns as well. And we have new profiles in three of the four equity future contracts. The one we do not have one in is the NQ. But in the ES Mini, price would need to close below 38, 30, I'm sorry, 38, below 36.89 to suggest that price is going to head lower. In the case of the Dow, these are bullish structured profiles. So this should be a pretty strong support level, which is between 38.69 and 37.40. Well, we can see it is, has been. We saw yesterday price push down, try to take that level out. It closed back above the center of that profile. Today, really the same thing. And as long as price remains above that, that's telling us it wants to get up to the 38.42. How, I don't know. That's what it's telling us. With regard to the Dow equity future contract, its key level of support is 29.983. Price also above the center of its daily profile, 33.27. Um, we're at uh, 33.38 right now. That's suggesting, as long as that condition remains, a move up to 31.360. In the case of the Russell 2000, uh, that has formed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signal out there, and it's also got a bullish structured profile, 16.67 being support, suggesting that, and now price is not here close above the center, which is at 16.94. If price does close above that, that would be our signal of a move to 17.72. So, in summary, the daily time frames, we can go across most of the indices, if not all of the indices, and have bottom signals out there. And that says that we should expect and anticipate a rally, a rally that's going to last a couple of weeks, two to three weeks, I would say, would be likely, potentially, though, at a minimum. 
If we take a look at what's going on intraday, uh, the only charts that identify any kind of intraday topping signals are going to be the 30-minute time frame. So we're going to switch over to those here momentarily. Give me a moment. Put those up on our screen. Why? There we go. Okay. And so here we've got the 30-minute charts. Now, the, the patterns that I'm referring to, well, first with regard to the NQ. The NQ confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top for its 30-minute time frame at noon today. Whenever there's a topping pattern that forms, basically what it's signaling to you and I is price should pull back to support. For levels of support, you and I have an oscillator and change line to take a look at. That's kind of a momentum indicator. We've got our TAS market profile levels. And then we have TD9 count breakout or breakdown areas out here. Well, in the case of the NQ, for its 30-minute time frame, the level of support, which has been tested and so far has been rejected, is at the 11,565. So for those of you that were calling curtains, to these markets out there, you might be disappointed. And I do believe it's the NQ out here that's going to be able to drive things. Now, in the case of the ES Mini, it's Rhodes Mintum Indicator Signal that took place yesterday afternoon. Still, price was unable to get above that high. In the case of the Dow, that's the lower left. Also, Rhodes Mintum Indicator Signal from yesterday afternoon. Price finding resistance at its TD9 count breakdown level, 36.81. That tells you that that's a key number to have jotted down in your pad of paper. Because if there is a close above that, that tells us about further highs to come. So right now, inside the NQ for the 30-minute time frame, we've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And right now, we have price just consolidating with inside that profile out there. And that's between 11,565 and 11,705. So that's what's going on. I don't know if there's anything else. Well, I guess there is. We can go take a look at the daily time frames out here. So let's do that because they're providing us with information as well. So let's go share that information with you. And in the upper left-hand corner, you've got the ES Mini. And it's key level. So we've established that price has been above the center of its daily bull structure profile out there. That suggests a move higher. But when we take a look at that oscillator and change line, we understand now why price is finding resistance out here. And what we need to see, or what the ES Mini needs to see, is a close above that oscillator and change line that is currently printing out at 3767. If we get that, then we're above the center of the profile, above the red oscillator and change line. That would be the signal of a move to 3841. The NQ the daily time frame actually does not have a bottom pattern in the NQ. The weekly's got the TD9 count bottom out there. And so that's, uh, that works for, that sort of works for me. But price is above the, uh, uh, its oscillator and change line. That suggested a move up to the 12037 area. The Dow, you can see how its red oscillator and change line is acted as resistance. The same thing for the Russell 2000. So it's really going to be those oscillator and change line levels that need to be watched because if price closes above that, that's going to be the confirmation of a further move higher. Now, you should expect and you should anticipate a bumpy ride. And the reason to anticipate a bumpy ride is because we don't have the type of bullish crossover. Let me get to the right screen here. Okay, so let's switch back to this one. Give me a moment. We'll get to it. And let's actually get to the daily time frame. So you can see here, this is the NASDAQ 100. 60 minute, 240 minute. They're in the uh, in the speed dials. This is the TAS market breath speed dials. They're in the green zone out there. They're they're bullish. They're bullish in, in a good way. The daily time frame is not just yet. That's why I do expect and anticipate this choppy market. It will remain choppy until we see a bullish crossover. We're a little bit of a ways away from that inside the NASDAQ 100. We have 19 instruments trading above the top of their daily profiles, 40 instruments trading below the bottom of their profile. When it comes to the uh, S&P 500, really the same scenario, same setup, bullish for the 60-minute, still bullish for the 240-minute chart out there. We take a look at the daily time frame. The daily time frame shows us what? It shows a uh, bearish crossover. 88 instruments trading above the top of the profile, 211 trading below the bottom. This is for the daily time frame. So expect and anticipate a bumpy ride. The markets have formed a bottom. We should see a rally that lasts for two to three weeks. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve 
in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. Uh, so let's get to some of our requests. The first one coming in from Nancy inside the Tigers. Then Nancy wants to take a look at Apple. So in the case of Apple out here, what we've got, we've got a nice weekly TD9 count bottom price right now. And you have an oscillator and change line that is uh, that it recently changed colors. So what this tells us, if that price can back, get back inside its weekly profile, Nancy, that means a close above 136.50. We're trading at 136.50 basically right now. If price get above that, that's going to signal move up towards that 149.62 level. That's coming from the weekly time frame. Oh, did I really just do that? Son of a gun. Now, where did I put it? Uh, let me see. One second here. I didn't mean to do that. I want to see if I get this back. Did that come back? There we go. Great. Okay. So now we take a look at the Apple chart. Was this the one? Let's, uh, so you've got an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. That was completed with the gap to the upside three days ago. So that was on Tuesday. Gap up is a bullish reversal candle. What price is dealing with right now, Nancy, for your trade is the top of that, is where sellers reside. That's at the 136.97 level. That is the top of that profile. Until price overcomes comes that, that's where the snipers are at. And I don't know whether price will overcome that. But let's go take a look at the intraday chart, see if there's some other signals out here for Nancy. Now, the only real signal that I see on the bullish side comes from the 15-minute time frame chart. This uh, formed a wave number seven. Let's just open this up. Everybody can see it. Uh, we use the same pattern signals. Doesn't matter what time frame. This forms a wave number seven top as well as a Rhodes momentum indicator top. It does that at 1130 this morning. And then what happens? Whenever you get a top, price should, head is, should uh, go try to test support. And that's exactly what happened here. There's profile support. There's breakout support. The breakout support at 135.52. That's exactly what took place as we were coming on the air. Well, actually, uh, as of about five minutes ago at 115, price tested and rejected that support level. 
So that's a positive. You're looking for Apple to move to the upside here. Now what you got to watch is the 138.26 level. Price can close above that, then you're off to the races to the upside. With regard to the other intraday charts out here, nothing of significance that I see at the moment. So you just got Apple trading up into that resistance zone, um, and your first pullback had tested support. That's that 15-minute chart out there. So maybe that's what you're looking for, but still don't know if uh, if buyers can really take out the uh, sellers for the day out there. So hope that helps you out with regard to what Apple is doing. The next question coming in from uh, CKP inside the Tiger's Den. CKP wants to take a look at bonds and the euro. So let's switch over, take a look at the treasury bond chart. We're going to see in the treasury bond, we're going to see two bottoms out here. We're going to see a daily and a weekly road momentum indicator signal. The weekly chart, you can see prices move lower to a less route of energy, triggers the road momentum indicator signal, generates a bullish hammer candle last week. Now, what price has done, it's getting all the way up to its red oscillator and change line. Here is significant resistance, or what should be significant resistance. And if price can close above this level, this level is about the 137 and a half area. We're 137.10 right now. Um, that would be, and it really needs to close above that on a weekly basis. It's Thursday, so you're really looking at where's tomorrow's close. But it close above the oscillator and change line, CKP, that would be a bullish outcome. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, the daily is doing what it's supposed to do, forms roads to indicator bottom, regains its uh, daily profile, and now price is going to go target the top of that profile at about the uh, 130, really close to, well, about 138 and uh, probably about uh, 11 or 12 ticks. I've got to do the conversion here for uh, the Ninja Trader system out there. But a price can close, well, I'll give you the exact number. Why don't I just give you the exact number? That would be good, Steve. Do that for him. Just give me a second here. I've just got to get to a different chart. And that number is going to be 138.09. Yeah, 138.09 out there. If pricing closes above that, then that tells you about a change in trend. And actually tell us about a change in trend with a move up to the 141.03 level. So that's what's going on. We take a look at a 30-year treasury. Let's go see what the euro is doing out here. We take a look at the euro. We've got the monthly, the weekly. We know in the monthly, we've got a nice TD9 count bottom. And if that thing fails, that tells us the euro is going to get ready to crater. But we don't have that signal right now. On the weekly time frame chart, you have a buy the D point. That means we had an A to B equal CD. To the downside, it was confirmed with this bullish engulfing candle on May the 20th. On a daily time frame, price is above its oscillator and change line. And as long as it remains above that area, suggest that price could do a further retracement. Now, it's going to have to take out yesterday's high to then suggest that price wants to get back into the 108-ish area out here where it formed a nice TD9 count top back on the trading day of May the 30th. But being above that red oscillator and change line is a um, – it's not so much a bullish signal. Bullish would be a green oscillator and change line, but it does tell you – about a uh, potential further retracement. As we take a look at the intraday charts out here to look for some kind of signal. 60 minute chart formed, looked like it formed, uh, did it? Let's see. No, nah, it did not. Um, but what, what price did do is it pulled back and tested support. And support was its breakout level at the 104.9 area. So that has held. Uh, let's see, uh, the 30 minute chart, what do we have out here? 30 minute chart for the euro. Yeah, not much there either. So with regard to the uh, euro, I'd watch that oscillator and change line for the daily time frame. That will help you with regard to the direction. And again, that is at 1.05. Let's go to our first caller out here. We've got Max in Houston. Max, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are Hello. you? Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing, Max? Steve, I have a question on Marathon Oil. I was, sure. um, I was invested in it, and I sold uh, in around 30 bucks, and I'm looking at getting back into it. So, um, you know, for for a trade, because I don't think I don't think Marathon is in bad shape. Um, I think oil prices are dropping, but their products are refined, uh, you know, oil products. So there appear to be a shortage of those. So I'm I'm thinking to getting back in, you know, for maybe two or three hundred shares. Okay. Well, let's take a look at it. So what we want to do with regard to Marathon Oil, we'll start here with the daily time frame chart. And I'll go ahead and expand it out for you. And the daily time frame chart shows uh, one here that price is now trading below a little rising trend line, but that there's also an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. So the cool thing here, Max, is that all you have to do is wait for a bullish reversal candle to then confirm the buy the D point pattern. So right now, 
The one-to-one price projection level was passed a couple of days ago. You're now below the 1.272 expansion. This is suggesting that price wants to go target the 2092 level. I'm not saying buy at 2092. I'm just giving you the next area for it to approach. When we do get a bullish reversal candle, or should we get a bullish reversal candle, that would then confirm a Gartley buy. And then I would say, okay, now you've got the signal to go ahead and buy back in to Marathon Oil. If you look at the weekly time frame chart, price right now is trading below the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. That says anticipate lower price out here. As we look at the monthly time frame chart, um, I need to actually switch over to my other charts out here so give me a moment to do that i just want to see what comes okay. up from the daily weekly time frame any other signals that i might be able to find for us so if you give me a moment here mro i'm going to get that populated we're going to change over to those screens but right now you're an a to b equal cd to the downside you've passed the 1.272 level you're just looking for a bullish reversal candle to give that confirmation i don't know that we're going to see much difference out here when we get to these white background charts but we're going to try to in a minute Right now, so it's trying to populate with Marathon Oil. Not a, so this is what I wanted to find out. So Marathon Oil, on a monthly basis, has completed a TD9 count. And it's also their change line, change colors. So we've got about 2092 as a price projection on the daily. And the monthly says 2030 or so. So do yourself a favor, Max. Be patient. Wait for a bullish reversal candle, preferably sometime around the, uh, right around the 2029 level. That would give you a signal to go ahead and take a long position. Alrighty? Do we still have Max? Thank you. You bet. C Roads with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Well, I hope Max is still listening in. Uh, I did uh, see something on here, and we're going to talk about it right now, which is that today is going to become the bar following bar number nine of a TD nine count. Now, the cool thing about that, the current low so far inside of Marathon Oil for the day is 2180. Let's assume that that holds. I don't know if it will. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it does or not. But if you do see price close below today's low tomorrow, again, right now we're at 2180, that's going to tell you about a strong momentum move to the downside. And uh, what that might mean, again, it just would confirm, wait for the bullish reversal candle on a daily time frame. But this TD9 count could most certainly take hold, Max. And the reason why it could take hold out here is because price is approaching its breakout level of 2131. You're above that level. The oscillator and change line recently changed color. Typically, after you get a completed bottom pattern, and the TD9 count is most certainly one of those, we would see price gravitate up towards that line, which is currently traded at 27 to 1. I'm not saying price will get up to 27 to 1. I'm saying it will target that line. As price moves higher or lower, that line is going to do its mathematical thing and, and uh, so forth. So you do have a potential out there for a bottom signal inside of Marathon Oil. And I just simply wanted to point that out to you. So, Max, thanks again for, uh, for calling in. Much appreciated. Let's go to our next question. We've got uh, quite a few out here. Uh, this one is coming in from uh, Nick. And Nick writes in, he wants to take a look at GUSH, G-U-S-H. But GUSH is really a triple ETF out there. So in order to really look at the GUSH and provide Nicholas with the information that he's looking for, we're going to look at the underlying instrument out there, which is the S&P 500 oil services area, which is the XOP. So we take a look at the XOP. Let's first write the question. Would you look at GUSH? Uh, is about half energy and half Dreyfus government fund of treasury fund reaching out the bottom, uh, close to entry. Thanks for all you do. Okay, so first on the, uh, just at least looking for an entry point. So we're looking for some type of bottom signal out here. The monthly time frame, you've got a confirmed TD9 count top out there. You've got a confirmed sell the D point. you got an oscillator and change line with a change color and suggest to move to the 108.79 level. On a weekly time frame out here, you've got a confirmed roads momentum indicator top. Prices below the bottom of its weekly profile, that says lower price. It could even target 93.95. If we take a look at the daily time frame, we're in a similar situation as we were with Marathon Oil. And when we take a look with Max, and here is going to become bar number nine. So in the case of Marathon Oil, um, I believe it was the bar following bar number nine. So you could still see a lower low tomorrow inside of XOP. And um, and if you did get that and the TD9 count identified the bottom, then uh, voila, you're, you're, you're there. You would have your, your, your buy signal. However, because like Marathon Oil, XOP has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside, I'd really prefer to get that bullish signal out there. I really like to prefer to see the, some signal that the cavalry has arrived. So when we take a look at the XOP, A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. The A point is going to be the high out here from June the 8th. The B point is going to be the low from uh, June 13th. The C point is going to be the high from June 14th out there, about a 0.382 retracement. You can see we're below the 1.618 level. The next price target range becomes 113.24 out there. So... You got a likely TD9 count bottom pattern that will form by tomorrow. I would still wait for the bullish reversal candle in order to confirm inside of the XOP. And then you could fire away at gush. gush. So I hope that helps you out, Nick. Thanks so much for writing in. Mimi writes in, and Mimi wants to take a look at uh, NEE. This is also in the oil area, I believe, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's get this up on our screens here. Uh, it's the white background. Well, let me just put it in the black background real quickly. Let's see what we have here. So we take a look at Next Terra Energy out here. So it's really the energy more than oil. You're inside its bullish structure, back inside its bullish structure profile. Now, this is, today's action is uh, quite bullish. I mean, what I mean by that is on the daily time frame, price had closed below its bullish structure daily profile. It closed below that on June 13th, and it's been below that level until today. Now, if it's just a counter trend move, and we won't really know till 4 o'clock, but as a 134, let me communicate to you what it's signaling to us. And that is that if this was only going to be a counter trend move to the upside, price would have or should have found resistance at 75.63. It's trading right now at 76.75. This suggests at least a move to resistance where the sellers are loaded up, and that's at 77.83. But if you overcome them, then this may be forming, may be forming an A to B equals CD to the upside. Your question is, please give the profile on uh, knee for the long. So from a daily standpoint, 74.90 at the bottom, 77.83 at the top. The weekly chart out here 
Um, price is already trading above the top of that profile. That's at 75.34. And on the monthly time frame, we've got just a consolidation with inside profiles. That ranges from 72.18, Mimi, all the way up to 91.34. So hope that helps you out. Uh, thanks so much for your help. You say, is there a correlation when oil is down, electricity stock goes up? Um, so let's do this here, Mimi. Uh, during a break, I'll pull up my correlation chart. We'll put up knee, and we'll go ahead and put up uh, light speed crude and see if that exists out there. So we'll come back to answering that question for you. In the meantime, let's go off to our next question. This one coming in from SNP inside the Tiger's Den. Wants to take a look at Fang. My recollection is he's not in it, uh, but looking for the question is how low can it go out there? So let's get the uh, charts here properly. Which uh, screen am I on? I'm on the black screens out here. So let's go ahead and get uh, Fang on the black screens here just for a moment and see if we can find any answer. We're looking for our profiles. We're below the weekly, bullish structured weekly. This could be day week number two. We're below the daily. Uh, so your next level of support, if price does not hold 118.10, it's signaling the possibility of a move back to 88.21. Let's go switch the uh, screen panels out here, see what our white background charts for the daily, weekly, and monthly communicate to us. On a monthly chart, you've got a TD9 count top with price approaching a oscillator and change line. That OUL is up at the 117 level. That can be a place where price would find support. If price fails there, your question was how low can it go? Well, the next lower price where we would find support on the weekly time frame would be 104.12. So the range would be between 88.21, the bottom of the monthly profile, and 104.12. I know that's a pretty good range, but you'd be obviously watching the 104.12 level first. You've got wave number seven. You've got um, uh, for the uh, top out there on the weekly time frame. With regard to the daily charts here for Fang, what do we have? You've got bar number nine that's forming right now. You could see a lower low tomorrow. So what Fang is communicating to us is even though it wants to head lower out here, at least that's coming from the monthly charts, coming from the weekly charts, the daily says, I may want to bounce. Now, whether that low is today or that low is tomorrow out there, we've got an oscillator and change line that changed colors, odds favor, that price in that line will catch up to each other. And that's the 139 level. So if you're looking to play Fang out here, um, wait till tomorrow. See what you see. That could be the lower low. And, of course, if it is, then I'd say wait till Monday to see how the markets respond out there. You also had a request to take a look at Devon Energy. DVN is the uh, ticker symbol. And, again, the same type of question, how low can Devon Energy go? How low can the FANG go out there? And when they say how low, what we're looking for is any kind of patterns or any kind of support levels. And Devon Energy is trading below its daily profile, below its weekly profile, and is with inside its monthly profile. And right now, because this also has a TD9 count top out here, where Devon Energy may be headed to S&P is $50.32 or thereabouts. That's the weekly oscillator and change line. Here on the weekly, that was the monthly oscillator and change line. Did I say weekly? I might have. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, price is simply below the uh, bottom of its profile. That says price could be pulling back to 41.31. So right now our two targets are 41.31 and 50.33. Again, Devon Energy is bar number nine of a TD9 count. That says either today or tomorrow could be a short-term bottom. Oscillator and change line changing color suggesting a bounce up towards that, which is currently about 66.27. So be patient here. But we should see a bottom form by tomorrow out there with at least a counter trend move, not a move, up towards that 6627 area. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hope you're right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Did you watch that hockey game last night? Went to overtime. That's always a bad thing for me because if, if I'm up that late, I get my second wind, which means it's hard to fall back asleep. But, boy, that overtime period out there, I mean, uh, Colorado, it looked, it looked like uh, Tampa wasn't even there. They were just so out of energy. All the play was in the uh, Tampa zone out there. And so it really wasn't a surprise that they ended up losing, which is a real disappointment. I was hoping we could at least get to game six and maybe a game seven out there. And that uh, may be a difficult thing to do. But back to Mimi's question out here. We've got the upper, the, the top portion of the chart is uh, ticker symbol NEE. And uh, the bottom is the correlation between NEE and light sweet crude. So in a bar, this is a, a five-day average out here. And so when we take a look at bars that are above the zero line, that tells you you have a directional correlation. When they're below the zero line, it tells you you have an inverse correlation. And, and her question was, when oil is down, electricity stocks uh, go up out there. Utility stocks go up. And, and you know, it's, it's kind of a coin toss out here. I don't know that I see any real significant pattern, more of a, a cycle type of pattern. And it doesn't matter whether you use five days or 10 days or 20 day, which would be about the longest time frame that you would use to take a look at the correlation. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd say, yeah, there's uh, – I'd like to see something more consistent out here, um, Mimi, than what we see. But here's the chart. Said that we would share that information with you. And uh, as uh, Gus would say in my big fat Greek wedding, there you go. Let's go take a look at our next request out here. This one coming in from uh, Coda. Coda wants to take a look at KWEB. I believe that's a Chinese uh, web company out there, if I'm not mistaken. And... Uh, if we take a look at, uh, yeah, it's a China ETF. So what you've got out here, Coda, um, is that price is running into resistance. That's the top of its bearish structured daily profile. So your resistance zone is between 3175 and 3293. Obviously, a close above 3293 would be bullish and suggest a move up to the 3898 area, um, possibly. Yeah, that's what I would be looking at when it comes to what the heck did I just do here? Oh, I pulled up the wrong gosh darn thing. Sorry about that. Give me a moment. Uh, let's get back to this. No wonder that didn't make any sense to Stevie. KWEB. It only changed one time frame. And uh, so what, what else do we have out here? 
Okay, so nothing else. I mean, we did have the daily out here. It's just the weekly. So if price can close above 32.93, then that would suggest to move up to 38.98, which is what I was really saying off that other chart out there. Uh, let's just switch over to the white background chart, see if there's anything here that we can help uh, code with with regard to KWEB, who's long at 31 bucks and change out there. So on a monthly time frame, do we have a bottom pattern? And the answer is I don't. On a weekly basis, do we have a bottom pattern? And the answer is we do. We've got a rose momentum indicator signal. We've got a slightly bullish structured profile with price above the center. And this is suggesting to us, Cody, that price wants to make a move to the 38.99 level. Now, you and I already established that on the daily time frame, you got that resistance at 32.93. And even if price can overcome that, what it really needs to overcome is that swing point high, which was also a TD9 count top. That was from the day of June the 8th. And so you really need to see price close above 34.12 out there to then suggest that it's off to the races. And maybe even then, an A to B equals CD to the upside. So the monthly, not really assisting us. But the weekly says you've got a bottom with a move higher. You get that same kind of a signal on the uh, daily time frame out here. Um, so watch that 32.93. I do hope that helps you out with regard to KWEB. So I think we've gotten through each of the questions out here. And that's a, a beautiful thing. Uh, let's see. Oh, nope. Uh, we've got another one here. This one coming in from uh, Vic. Wants to take a look at Tupperware. T -U ticker symbol there for Tupperware is T-U-P out there. Got to admit they have some great products. At least I like resealing things. You know, probably like you. You know, you go out to a restaurant. Or you may maybe eat at home, and you know you bring home the leftovers, or you store the leftovers, and they usually are stored until when, garbage day. Oh well, but if we take a look at Tupperware, you're thinking of purchasing Tupperware. So what we want to do for Vic is see if we can find a bottom. On a monthly basis, we have the white background charts up. Let me see. We do. Monthly basis, price is sitting at support. And that is the bottom of its monthly profile out there. So, you know, can that be a buy point? Yeah, it can be. But you'd like to see some kind of weekly bottoming signal inside of Tupperware. So let's go look to the weekly chart. What do we have? Do we have an A to B equals CD to the downside? So I'm just going to visually look at it. So I see the A to B to C to D. We've got the bullish reversal candle, bullish engulfing candle that formed last week. So on a weekly basis, yeah, you've got a buy the D point pattern. Now, what price should do here, because it's inside its weekly profile, is price should make its way up to about the 819 level. You're at 709. We look at the daily time frame chart, roads momentum indicator signal. Price is broken out above its TD9 count breakdown area at 674. So, yeah, Tupperware is saying that it wants to move higher out there, likely waiting for the markets to get their act together. We covered this during the beginning of the show. you got to expect and anticipate a bit of a bumpy ride here while uh, it tries to uh, reshift and get more instruments traded above the top of its daily profile than the bottom in both the NDX100 and the S&P 500 out there. But Tupperware, you're sitting at support on the monthly. You've got a bottom pattern on the weekly. You've got a bottom pattern on the uh, daily time frame. And on the daily time frame, price is busted above resistance, both the top of its profile as well as its uh, TD9 count breakdown level, suggests that Tupperware does want to move higher. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Vic. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. And now it looks like we have gotten through everything. Uh, I believe I've gotten through everything inside the Tiger's Den, or I don't see any other questions out there. However... If you do have a question and I didn't get to it, if you'd be kind enough just simply to repost that for me, and then I'll do as such. In the meantime, let's go take a look at some other instruments out here. So let me just get back to the charts. What are they, uh, just uh, the markets? I'm just looking at my main screen out here just to see what is it that we should look at. So let's go take a look at what should we look at? <laughs> what should we look at? How about uh, light sweet crude? Let's go take a look at light sweet crude. So let's get those charts up on our screen out here. Let's go to our uh, yeah, the N cube. Let's go ahead and put up light sweet crude. So let's go see what it's doing. Oh, there was a question that came in um, earlier, and I need to get to that. Uh, so that was from Laura. And I, Laura, I went ahead and put together the charts to answer your question. So let's actually do that. I will get light sweet crude here. Laura's question was, she was asking if I could show her or share with her the so-called amount of uh, 
inflation or rise in price that's attributable to uh, the Putin war or whatever, the, however they refer to it versus uh, what did things look like up until that point in time. So to do that, what I did here is I don't have a way to pull up inflation, which is one of the things that she was asking about. So I don't have a ticker symbol where I can go look at historical inflation. I'd have to put that together manually. But what I did do for you is I put this together. So as an example, gasoline. I was driving over to uh, um, Naples after the show yesterday, and of course, no, in Naples, you, gas has been typically about 60 to 70 cents a gallon cheaper on the premium. So I typically only get enough gas in my car to make it over there, and I fill up over there. Well, gas, is, gas really has gone up over there in the last week and a half. Um, it's, uh, there's only about a 15 cent difference. So I was like, that's not, I'm not going to spend any time worrying about that. But here, with regard to gasoline, from the day after the election in uh, 2020 until the uh, time of the uh, Putin invasion, gasoline went up 157%. Since then, it's 36% out there. These are the numbers. These are the facts. That's for gasoline. We come back from this break here. We'll finish looking at wheat, natural gas, corn, and light sweet crude. That's that question. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So, Laura, the other increases that you were looking for, wheat has gone up by 52 percent from the time period of the election to the Russian invasion, 11 percent from that time thereafter. If you take a look at natural gas, it's pretty much a wash, 49 percent to the upside. Uh, then after the uh, Russian invasion, 46 percent out there. So that's kind of a uh, an equal with regard to corn, up 73 percent. Uh, from the time of the election and 10 percent since the uh, uh, Russian invasion out there. And lastly, with the to lights, we crude 154 percent increase from the uh, time of the election and 83, I'm sorry, 19 percent uh, moved to the upside since the Russian invasion. So there's the information that you were looking for out here. The last question coming in from uh, Michael P. wants to take a look at uh, Bitcoin. So I believe we're in the July contract here, Michael. And what you're looking for here for potential bottom inside of Bitcoin Bitcoin is some type of push below bar number seven, either today or tomorrow. And that low out there is 19,710. Um, and if you get a push below that, you don't have a close below, you just got to get a push below that between today and tomorrow, then you would have a TD nine count bottom. Now, what that would then suggest is that price would make a move up towards its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed about 21,352. And if price can overcome that, then price would likely go target the 28,408 level. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, Bitcoin here for the daily time frame. Um, on the weekly time frame, it looks like you've got a TD9 count bottom out here. And that says on a weekly basis, you do not want to see a close below 20.055. If you get a close below that, that's going to suggest lower prices coming at you. So Michael P., thanks for taking the time to write in. I hope that helps you out and gives you the information that you're looking for. And we've come to the end of the show. So, folks, thanks so much for joining us here today. Stay tuned. You've got two more wonderful hours left. David White, your favorite polar bear, he's up next. After that, you got Tom O'Brien. He'll take us on home. Have a terrific Thursday. Hey, by the way, join me tomorrow from 8 to 9. That's when I'll be recording the show. I'll try to make it as pertinent as I can for the 1 to 2 o'clock session. Have a great day, folks, and we'll see you on Fantastic Friday.